protocols are a bit like contracts for our Swift code. They let us define what kind of functionality we expect our types to support, and Swift will ensure those types add the required functionality, that they follow the rules. For example, let's say we're trying to simulate a user commuting between their home and their office. We might write some sort of car struct, then write code such as this. Func commute distance int using vehicle car. Then lots of code inside. Now, of course, they might also commute by train. So we'd also write this kind of function. Commute distance int using vehicle train. Or, of course, by bus using vehicle bus. Or they might use a bike or an e-scooter or a ride share or any number of other options. The truth is, at this point, we don't actually care what the underlying trip is done with. We don't care how it happens. What we care about is much broader. How long will it take for the user to commute using a car versus a bus versus a train? And how to perform the actual act of traveling? This is where protocols come in. They let us define a series of properties and methods we want to use. They don't implement them. They just say, these must exist. So there's no code behind them, just a requirement, a bit like a blueprint. For example, we could make a new vehicle protocol like this, protocol vehicle. And then func estimate time for distance int returns int, func travel distance int. Let's break it down. To create a new protocol, we write protocol followed by the protocol name. This is a new type, just like int, string, bool, and others. And so you want a capital letter and camel case. Inside the protocol, we list all the methods and any properties we want for this protocol to exist in other types. So when someone wants to work with this, they've got to use these method names here. And you'll notice these methods have no function bodies inside. They're just specifying method names, parameter types and names, plus return values. You can also say it throws errors, or it might mutate, whatever you want. And so we've made a protocol, protocol vehicle. How has that actually helped our code? Well, now we can design types that work with that protocol. This means making new structs, new classes, new enums, and more that implement the requirements for this protocol, which is a process we call adopting the protocol or conforming to the protocol. Now, the protocol doesn't have to specify the full range of functionality inside our custom types, just the bare minimum. It must have these two methods. It might have five other ones, which is fine. For example, over in Xcode, we could make a car struct that conforms to vehicle like this. Struct car conforms to vehicle. I'll have func estimate time. You see it's completing it, forming it, knows what the method is called and the parameters and so forth. It's got the protocol. And I'll say the method here is going to do distance divided by 50. That's my rough estimate. And then we'll have travel, again, distance int. And I'll do print. I'm driving distance km, or miles, if you're in one of those handful of countries that like miles. We'll also add another one. Let's do func open sunroof. Print, it's a nice day. Okay, there are a few things I want to point out in this code uh, to just draw attention to them if possible. Um, we tell Swift that this car struct conforms the vehicle by using a colon, then our protocol name, vehicle, just like we'd make subclasses, except here it's a struct. So we're adopting the protocol or conforming to the protocol, not inheriting from a vehicle class. All the methods we had in vehicle must exist inside car. We must have them to conform to it. If they have slightly different names or different return types and so forth, if we try and make estimate time return, uh, uh, double or who knows what, right? It will complain. I'll make travel distance support a double, for example. That's different than our protocol required. Bang, it's complaining loudly. 
So it's got to be exactly right, same parameters, same return types, and more. The methods inside car, these are real now. Yes, they have to be the same name, same parameter list, same return type, yada, 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 as the protocol, but now they have the open and close brace with function bodies inside. They do the actual work as defined in the protocol. They put the real work in here. They're providing a rough estimate and printing a message when they travel stuff. And this open sunroof method is new. That was not in the protocol, but that's okay. The protocol is a list of bare requirements. You must do at least these things. You can still add more things beyond the basic conformances. So now we've made a protocol and made a car struct that conforms to the protocol correctly. To finish up, let's build that commute function we talked about earlier. So it has the new methods we used on car. I'll say func commute distance int using vehicle car. And now we'll say uh, if vehicle dot estimate time for distance is greater than 100, we'll print out that's too slow. Uh, I'll try a different vehicle. Otherwise, vehicle dot travel distance, and then we'll do distance like that. So we've now got a function that draws upon the methods we added to car, estimate time and travel distance. We can go ahead and use it. Let's say let car equals car, and then commute distance 100 using that car. And I'll press play. It'll have a little think. I say little, you know, <laughs> who knows? I'm driving 100K. So that's worked correctly. So the code's fine, it builds and runs, but here the protocol isn't actually adding any value. Yes, it made us implement these two methods, but we could have done that without the protocol. We could just remove the conformance here and get exactly the same result, right? It wasn't doing anything. Boom, same result. So why do we want that? Why would we want to have the car conformance here? Well, here comes the clever part. Swift knows that any type that conforms this vehicle protocol must implement both estimate time and travel distance. It has to. And so it actually lets us use the vehicle type as a type of our parameter inside commute, not just car. We can say using vehicle, some kind of vehicle. I can press play now and it will still work exactly the same. So now we're saying commute distance using can be called with any type of data in string car, blah, 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 as long as we've made that conform to the vehicle protocol. The body of the function, this part here, does not need to change because Swift knows for sure estimate time and travel always exist on the vehicle type. Now, if you're still wondering why it's useful, let's add another struct. Let's say there is struct bicycle conforms to vehicle. And we'll do func estimate time for distance. We'll do distance divided by 10, a little slower. And then travel distance, we'll do print I'm cycling distance km. Go. And then we'll call down here, let bike equals a new bicycle. And commute distance 50 using bike. And press play. So we're still calling the same commute function, but now if with two different types, here we're calling it with a car, here we're calling it with a bicycle, both of them work correctly. Hello monster, come on. Both of them work great. So we've got a second struct here, bicycle, that conforms to the vehicle protocol. And this is where the power of protocol becomes apparent. If my dog gets a treat, of course, come on you. I know you're hungry, never get fed, eh? eh? Say hello. People are tweeting nice things about you, you know, believe it or not. Saying you're cute and fluffy, not drooly and hungry, occasionally barky. 
anyway, we're now passing in two different types into commute. Internally, this function inside commute can have all the logic it wants, and as long as it calls estimate time or travel, Swift will automatically use the appropriate version of that. It will call travel on the bicycle struct. I'm cycling, blah, blah, blah. Or it'll call travel on the vehicle here. I'm driving, blah, blah, blah. Right? It knows to do the right one automatically. And so protocols let us talk about the kind of functionality we want to work with rather than the exact types. More licks, huh? Is that the exchange rate? One treat, one lick. Um, rather than saying, oh, this parameter must be a car or this must be a bike, or whatever, we can say, actually, we don't really care what this parameter is as long as it can estimate travel time and move the user around to a new location. Thank you for the licks. Yeah, I love you too. You're a good dog. <laughs> uh, like that. Now, as well as methods, we can also add to our uh, protocol to create properties. We can say, um, you must have properties A, B, and C, and all conforming types have to add those properties. To do this, you want to say var, then a name, and then say, should be readable or, and or writable. For example, we could say, uh, actually, all types that conform to vehicle must specify how many seats they have and how many passengers they currently have. We could say the vehicle var name, string get only and var current passengers int is get set read and write this adds two properties first up a name string which must be readable that might mean it's a constant let name blah, 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 but it might also be a computed property with a getter so it can read the value out current passengers must be read write it can't be a constant or a get only computed property. It's got to be get and set. So you can see we have type annotation for both of these things, int and string, uh, because we can't provide a default value here. We can't say equals anonymous or equals four because protocols like this don't have implementations inside. They're just marking out a blueprint for how things ought to look. As you can see with those two extra requirements in place, Swift is complaining car and bicycle no longer conform to the protocol. They are not good enough anymore. And to do that, we've now got to add those missing properties to both structs. So a car, we might say, uh, let name equals car, constant, and var, current passengers, and I'll make it equal to one by default. And if bicycle, we might say, uh, oops, Daisy, we might say, let name equals uh, bicycle, cool. And then var current passengers equals one. Again, you could replace these with computed properties if you wanted to, as long as they obey the rules. If you use get set in your protocol, it must be readable and writable. So you can't use a constant to describe that inside your struct, it's not allowed. Good girl. So now our protocol vehicle requires two properties, name and current passengers, and two methods, estimate time and travel, meaning that all conforming types must implement those two properties and two methods at the very least in order for the code to compile. Swift won't allow it otherwise. This in turn means Swift knows those properties are always present. So we can you know, breathe down my microphone for me. Thank you. <laughs> so we can write code relying on those properties being there, relying on those methods being there. For example, you jump down, please. Come on, there you go. Good girl. Scratch it later, okay? Good girl. For example, we can write a method that accepts an array of vehicles and uses it to calculate estimates based on a range of options. So we could say, you know, how fast by car, how fast by bike, how fast by hovercraft, whatever, right? So let's down here under the commute we'll say uh, func get travel estimates using vehicles, vehicle, distance, int. And inside here, we've got an array of vehicles. We'll just do for vehicle 
in vehicles, let estimate equals vehicle dot estimate time for that distance. How long does it take you, whatever you are, to travel that far? And we'll do print uh, vehicle dot name estimate estimate hours to travel uh, distance k m like that. Boom. So now we can part, call, call that get travel estimates using let's do car and bike distance will do uh, I don't know, 120 or something right some number like that 150 there you go press play so it's telling us now it takes three hours by car or 15 hours by bike it'll do the right thing automatically using the names as more it's really really flexible there's a whole array of unknown things and all we know is every one of them conforms to the vehicle protocol. We could pass in a five different kinds of car, some bikes, or any other strut that conforms to vehicle, and it will automatically work. Now, as well as accepting parameters of your protocol, like vehicle, you can return vehicles too. Protocols are very, very flexible indeed. One last tip before I finished. You can, if you want to, conform to as many protocols as you want just by listing them one by one separated by a comma so if we had also uh, protocol uh, can be electric for example I don't know whatever here um, you would just say vehicle comma can be electric and it now conforms to both those protocols if you ever need to subclass something and conform to protocols Make the subclass, the parent class name, come first after the colon. So you put that right here where vehicle is, and then A, B, C, D for other protocols you want to conform to.